Hello everyone, welcome back to uh, my 2018 tutorial series. This one is going to be our catapult project. So again, as previous 2018 projects, this is just a rehash of my 2015 series. Um, in this project, we are not going to have any referencing images. We're just going to create modular pieces and kind of fill from scratch. So um, to begin with, we're just going to do what we do with every project, which is create one. So we're going to go to compile, project window. We'll go to new. This one's going to be called catapult project. Desktop is fine. We'll hit accept. Now I'm going to set to this project so that as I open up new project or open up Maya, it will always go to this one. And anytime I save, um, it will either save the scene files or render the images in this project folder. So we'll go to file, set project, catapult project, and set. Now the last bit is just to save an actual scene file in there, which is what we're working in right now. So I'll go to File, Save Scene As, and you can see the directory is now going to Catapult Project Scenes. So I can now go to uh, Catapult. I'm going to go to Modeling Stage, and my last name. Just so anyone else who's working my project will know that I'm working on this scene. So guys. All right, so now to uh, get started here, um, if you are in my class, you'll want to go to Moodle, and there is a file right here that is the Catapult Texture. This is the one we're going to be using. Why don't you go, to it, go ahead and go there and download it now. If you're not in my class, you can go to the link down below, and it will have a link to my Dropbox that will have this file texture in it if you want to follow along. Um, you are also welcome to make your own textures. You don't have to necessarily use this one. Okay, so I already downloaded this one. So I'll do show in folders. See it right there. And I'm just going to move it to my, my catapult folder. Catapult project. Open that up. Go to source images. And I'm just going to take that one image and put it right there. And we're going to use that one texture image to texture all of our catapult. Now, it is worth noting that this is an outdated way of texturing. We don't normally texture the things this way anymore, but you can still use it this way. Um, most programs like Substance Scanner, um, Armorset Toolbag, Mudbox, ZBrush, those are what we usually use to paint and texture. But, um, this is still an adequate way of doing it and actually makes it where we can texture a lot of different pieces using the same texture. Okay, so let's go ahead and start creating stuff. We're going to drop in our scene to begin with a cube. We'll get one of those in there. Okay. And I'm going to scale this cube in the z-axis. So it's moving towards the camera. This is in the side to side with the x. So red box is x-axis, blue box is Z axis, the depth. I'm just going to scale it out to about right in here. And I'm going to scale it this direction just a little bit. So it looks kind of like a, you know, a 2 by 8 or 2 by 12 or something like that. Uh, maybe even a 4 by 12. <clears throat> but what I'm making here, these are going to be the main support beams for the catapult along the length. Um, I'm going to also bevel these top edges and bottom edges. Now I don't want to bevel the vertical edges. I want to leave those ones alone. So I'm going to go to edge mode. I'm going to select all the edges. I'm going to deselect just these vertical edges. I'm just holding down control, left mouse button to inverse select things. Okay, and now I'm going to bevel. I'll select the bevel icon right here. If you don't have it on your shelf for some reason, it is underneath Edit Mesh. Second up icon down is Bevel. So I'm hit Bevel. Okay, underneath the fraction, we're going to roll this back a little bit. We're going to go to 0 0.2. And maybe I'll even add an extra segment in there. Okay. Now we have some nice soft corners on our piece of wood here. 
that's what it's going to be. It's going to be made out of wood. Um, now I want to go through the process, and I'm going to do this for each piece. I'm going to go ahead and go through the process of laying out the UVs, adding the texture in right away. That way, as I modulate the creation of this, um, that each piece will already be textured rather than having to go backwards and texture all the pieces after I'm done modeling. Okay, so I'm going to go to the UV dropdown. I'm just going to go to automatic. Okay, so the UVs are now created for this guy. I'm also going to select this guy and add a new shader for it. So um, you can go to the hyper shades this little icon up here that'll open up your hyper shade menu. Um, also, you can just do right mouse button on here, go to assign favorite material and Lambert. And so now the Lambert has been attached to it. I'm just going to go ahead and call this one. Oops. Get rid of the two. I'm just going to call it catapult. Catapult. Texture. Lambert. And underneath the color attribute, I'll go ahead and click on the checker box icon on the end. So I can get a create render node going. I'm going to go to file. I'm going to click on the folder. And there's my catapult in UV. If I hit open. And as you can see in here, because all we got here is two simple wood textures and a metal texture. So if you were to want to go and find your own textures and put them together in Photoshop so you have uh, a spreadsheet of textures from you guys are welcome to do so you guys don't have to stay with these three textures this is just what I'm using for now go ahead and open I'll have to turn textures on inside the scene so that what I just attached is viewable so this icon right here is the textures icon so go ahead and make sure that is active okay now I can go ahead and start to lay out the textures on here so click on the on the cube Actually, before we even go there, let's make sure that our cube is also named. We want to make sure we have some good naming conventions going along. So in the channel box there, editor, go ahead and click on that icon and call this one um, wood beam. And actually, let's keep the prefixes in here for naming conventions. Mesh wood beam. There we go. Okay, so now. We can go ahead and create a split view so that this is viewable over here. We'll go to panels, panel, and UV editor. Okay. I want to turn on shell shading so I can see because we got all this white here and you know where the white border is here, it becomes almost invisible over here. So toggle shading. There we go. So now we can see our UV shells. And I'm going to right mouse button in this area, go to UV shell. Like all the shells, because I don't like them in my workspace as I'm organizing them. Otherwise, I can't really see necessarily what I'm trying to do. Okay. So now is what I need to do is kind of figure out where these all go and which ones need to be scaled to look correct. So let's just figure out which shell is which shell. So we're in the UV shell mode over here. And as I hover over here, you can see them lighting up in this window. Same will work over here. So if I go over here and click on one, I can see over in this window which one it is. So I want these ones. Right, so I just highlighted all those minus the bandits, and, and now I know that these ones are all the ones that are supposed to run in the link. Okay, that's helpful. Okay, so let's figure out, <clears throat> excuse me, which one this one is. This one is there, and is it facing the right way? I can see that the grains are running the right direction, so that's right, but. I want to take up all of this texture information so it got enough detail in it. So I'm going to scale this down a little bit. And then I'm going to scale on the X so it takes up all the space. Now, you don't want anything in the white. If it goes over the edge in the white little bit, that's not good. It'd be better that it's inside the bounds than out of the bounds at all. Okay, get that up. Oops. Must be facing the wrong way. Let's get it this way. I was mistaken, the greens were facing the wrong way. Go to UV mode, grab these bottom two ones. I think when I scaled it, I skewed it just a little bit. There we go. 
I have a look over here. This looks a lot better. Okay. So now I'm going to do the same thing to the other ones. And that will make it where each one will have that same quality texture. So again, I'm just going to scale this one down a little bit. And I'll scale it out in the X axis. It's okay that these are overlapping because the way that Maya renders, the way that everything renders when it's using textures, is that it doesn't care about whether the UVs are overlapping. It just cares about the texture that is supposed to be assigned to that particular spot on the UV texture map. So that means that the UV islands can overlap and share UV space. That, that might also have been kind of had to be the right way. Get a little bit more going this way. I want to make sure I'm not just taking off the top. Do it that way. Would it make sense that it'd be this way? I just want to make sure that I'm getting the right texture space going on. And probably good for you guys to experiment as well. Yeah, that it was right going the other way. So I'll just control Z to kind of pull it back. There we go. This is what we're doing. What we're doing isn't the normal way of getting good texture density. Um, we are somewhat cheating a bit. That's okay for this project. That's the reason why this is actually an old way of texturing because you don't get complete accurate texture density. And when I say texture density, it just means that the UVs are sharing uh, texture space that is even for all of the UVs. So all of the polygons all share the same amount of texture space and are not stretched or skewed. I'll give you an example here in just a second after I finish this one up here. What I mean by texture density. So, like I said, we are ignoring this, but just so you can exa see an example of what I'm talking about, I'm going to click on this icon right here. This will assign a checker box to the texture here temporarily, just so you guys can see. See how it's evenly spread over here? So now you can see how the checker boxes should be in squares, but since they're stretched rectangularly, you can see that um, this UV texture is actually stretched. But from the side, you can see this actually squashed even more. From this angle, you can see these ones are actually more square. So that, that kind of gives you an idea on how the UVs aren't, um, they're stretched and skewed and they're not even. Texture density should be all the same size squares and they should all be non-stretched and not warped at all. So um, in this project, like I said, we're ignoring that, but I did just want to kind of let you guys understand what I'm talking about with UV texture density. And get to the last bits here. We're just going to take these guys and we will put them back in here. I don't need to take up all the texture density for these guys because these ones actually already were. I didn't stretch those ones at all. I'm curious, so let's go ahead and bring these up here just for a moment. Let's see if I relax them. No, these are already relaxed. Okay. I want to see if they're going to change any shape if I relax them. Those are both good. Okay, I look around and that's all good. Okay. So we got our first piece of wood created and we also have it textured. So we're doing good so far. We have one last bit and then we're going to take a break from this lesson. 
So what I want to do is to show you guys how you can mirror through hierarchy. And this is going to be very rudimentary to begin with, but it's going to become one of our key components to creating our pedestal as we move forward in the project. So what we're going to do is we just want to simply take our beam here and we're just going to move it to one side of the world axis so that we can have it uh, about this much over here. What we're envisioning is that this will be our mirror. We're going to basically be using hierarchy to mirror this beam. And that means that we need to kind of envision that two spaces away from the world access right in here, that it'll also be two spaces in the world access on this side. Okay. So let me open up the outliner so you can see what I'm talking about as I'm doing this. So here's the outliner. Oops, not that one. This one. This one. That one. Okay, so here's our beam. What we're gonna do, let's look at this tree for a moment. I'm gonna hit control G. And this one's going to be called CRP underscore beam and R. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, you can see how the move icon is now at the origin because everything that's created is at the origin. Now a group is a empty object at the origin. So we're basically using that parent node relationship and its location to be able to help us mirror things across the axis. So I'll go ahead and hit Control D with this group selected, not with this selected. If I did that, it would create a duplicate inside the group. I'm creating a duplicate of the group. So here we go. I have a second group. I'm going to rename this one as L. Okay. So I can see that it is going across the x axis, right? So go over to the x and put minus one in the scale x. And there we go. Pops right over. And it's now a duplicate on the other side, a mirrored version of this other beam. Okay, so that's good. Um, in the next lesson, we're going to kind of pr kind of proceed here, and we'll continue building pieces that we need from this original beam, and we'll create some new beams as well to modulate through the design. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next lesson.